there, friends and boba fiends. I'm Melissa Aguilas, and welcome to Books and Boba. Thank you guys for watching my first episode, and we're going to be starting off this week with Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. As a lot of you know, this is the eighth installment of the Harry Potter series, and I'm so excited to read this to you guys. And thank you guys for watching. So as some of you know, um, this is actually not in novel form. This is a play, so if it kind of sounds a little weird as I repeat the people's names, um, I know a lot of you guys will be listening to this um, kind of like as a book, so I'll be reading the names as I do the accents. And thank you again for watching, um, and let's get right to it. Act 1, Scene 1, King's Cross. A busy crowded station, full of people trying to go somewhere. Amongst the hustle and bustle, two large cages rattle on top of two laden trolleys. They're being pushed by two boys, James Potter and Albus Potter. Their mother, Ginny, follows after. A 37-year-old man, Harry, has his daughter, Lily, on his shoulders. Albus. Dad, he keeps saying it. Harry. James, give it a rest. James. I only said he might be in Slytherin. And he might, so... Off his dad's glare. Fine. Albus looks up at his mum. You'll write me, won't you? Ginny. Every day if you want us to. Albus. No, not every day. James says that most people only get letters from home once, about once a month. I don't want to... Harry. We wrote to your brother three times a week last year. Albus. What? James! Albus looks accusingly at James. Ginny. Yes, you may not want to believe everything he tells you about Hogwarts. He likes a laugh, your brother. James with a grin. Can we go now, please? Albus looks at his dad, then at his mum. Ginny. All you have to do is walk straight at the wall between the platforms 9 and 10. Ginny. Uh, Lily. I'm so excited. Harry, don't stop and don't be scared. You'll crash into it. That's very important. Best to do it at a run if you're nervous. Albus. I'm ready. Harry and Lily put their hands on Albus's trolley. Ginny joins James's trolley. Together, the family run hard into the barrier. Act 1, Scene 2, Platform 9 and 3 quarters which is covered in thick white steam pouring from the Hogwarts Express, and which is also busy, but instead of people in sharp suits going about their day, it's now. There's a motorcycle outside. Instead of people in sharp suits, it's going about their day, it's now witches and wizards in robes, mostly trying to work out how to say goodbye to their beloved progeny. Albus, this is it, Lily. Wow! Albus. Platform nine and three quarters. Lily. Where are they? Are they here? Maybe they didn't come. Harry points at Ron, Hermione, and their daughter Rose. Lily runs hard up to them. Uncle Ron! Uncle Ron! Ron turns towards them as Lily goes barreling up to him. He picks her up into his arms. If it isn't my favorite Potter, says Ron. Lily, have you got my trick? Ron, are you aware of the Weasley's Wizard Weezes certified no stealing breath? Rose, Mom, he's, Dad's doing that lame thing again. Hermione, you say it's lame. He says it's glorious. I say somewhere in between. Ron, hang on, let me just munch this air. And now it's just a simple matter of, excuse me if I smell slightly of garlic. He breathes on her face. Lily giggles. <laughs> you smell of porridge, says Lily. Ron. Bing, bang, bong. Young lady, get ready to not be able to smell at all. He lifts her, her nose off. Lily. Where's my nose? Ron. ta -da! His hand is empty. It's a lame trick. Everyone laughs at his lame. Everyone enjoys his lameness. Lily. You are silly. 
Albus. Everyone's staring at us again. Ron. Because of me! I'm extremely famous. My news experiments are legendary. Hermione. There's certainly something. Harry. Porked all right then? Ron. I did. Hermione didn't believe I could pass a muggle driving test, did you? She thought I'd have to confirm the, the examiner. Hermione. I thought nothing of the kind. I had complete faith in you. Rose. And I have complete faith he did confirm the examiner. Ron. Oi! Albus. Dad. Albus pulls on Harry's robes. Harry looks down. Do you think... What if I am? What if I'm putting Slytherin? Harry. And what's wrong with that? Albus. Slytherin is the house of the snake, of dark magic. It's not a house of brave wizards. Harry. Albus Severus, you were named after two headmasters of Hogwarts. One of them was a Slytherin, and he was probably the bravest man I ever knew. Albus. But just say... Harry. Harry. If it matters to you, you, the sorting hat, will take your feelings into account. Albus. Really? Harry. It did for me. This is something he's never said before. It resonates around his head a moment. Hogwarts will be the making of you, Albus. I promise you, there is nothing to be frightened of there. James. Apart from the Thestrals. Watch out for the Thestrals. Albus, I thought they were invisible. Harry, listen to your professors. Don't listen to James. And remember to enjoy yourself. Now, if you don't want this train to leave without you, you should leap on. Lily, I'm going to chase the train out. Ginny, Lily, come straight back. Hermione, Rose, remember to send Neville our love. Ro Rose, Mom, I can't give a professor love. Rose exits for the train, and then Albus turns and hugs Ginny and Harry one last time before following after her. Albus. Okay, then. Bye. He climbs on board. Hermione, Ginny, Ron, and Harry stand watching the train as whistles blow up and down the platform. Ginny. They're going to be okay, right? Hermione. Hogwarts is a big place. Ron. Big, wonderful, full of food. I'd give anything to be be going back. Harry. Strange. Al being worried he'd be sorted into Slytherin. Hermione. That's nothing. Rose is worried whether she'll break the Quidditch scoring record on her first or second year. And how early she can take her owls. Ron. I have no idea where she gets her ambition from. Ginny. And how do you feel, Harry, if Al... If he is? Ron. You know, Gin, we always thought there was a chance you could be sorted into Slytherin. Ginny. What? Ron. Honestly, Fred and George ran a book. Hermione. Can we go? People are looking at... People are looking, you know. Ginny. People always look when you three are together and apart. People always look at you. The four exit. Ginny stops Harry. Harry, he'll be all right, won't he? Harry, of course he will. Act 1, Scene 3. The Hogwarts Express. Albus and Rose walk along the carriage of the train. The trolley witch approaches, pushing her trolley. Trolley witch. Anything from the trolley, dears? Pumpkin pasty? Chocolate frog? Cauldron cake? Rose spotting Albus's loving look at the chocolate frog. Al, we need to concentrate. Albus. Concentrate on what? Rose. On who we choose to be friends with. My mum and dad met your dad on their first Hogwarts Express, you know. Albus. So we need to choose who we'll be friends with for life? 
That's quite scary. Rose, on the contrary, it's exciting. I'm a Granger Weasley. You're a Potter. Everyone will want to be friends with us. We've got to, we've got a pick of anyone we want. Albus, so how do we decide which compartment to go to, to go in? Rose, we rate them all and then we make a decision. Albus opens a door to look in on a lo lonely blonde kid, Scorpius, in an otherwise empty compartment. Albus smiles. Scorpius smiles back. Albus. Hi, is this compartment? Scorpius. It's free. It's just me. Albus. Great, so we might just come in for a bit, if that's okay. Scorpius. That's okay. Hi. Albus. Albus. Al. I'm... My name is Albus. Scorpius. Hi, Scorpius. I mean, I'm Scorpius. You're Albus. I'm Scorpius. And you must be... Rose's face is growing cold by the minute. Rose. Rose. Scorpius. Hi, Rose. Would you like some of my fizzing whispies? Rose. I've just had breakfast, thanks. Scorpius. I've also got some choco choc pepper imps and some jelly slugs. Mum's idea, she says. Sweets, they always help you make friends. He realises singing was a mistake. Stupid idea, probably. Albus. I'll have some. Mum doesn't let me have sweets. Which one would you start with? Rose hits Albus out of sight of Scorpius. Scorpius. Easy. I've always regarded the pepper imp as the king of the confectionery bag. They're peppermint sweets that make you smoke out of the ears. Albus. Brilliant. Then that's what I'll... Rose hits him again. Rose, will you please stop hitting me? Rose. I'm not hitting you. Albus. You are hitting me and it hurts. Scorpius' face falls. She's hitting you because of me. Albus, what? Scorpius, listen, I know who you are, so it's probably only fair you know who I am. Albus, what do you mean you know who I am? Scorpius, you're Albus Potter, she's Rose Granger Weasley, and I'm Scorpius Malfoy. My parents are Astoria and Draco Malfoy. Our parents, they didn't get on. Rose, that's putting it mildly. Your mum and dad are Death Eaters. Scorpius affronted. Dad was, mum wasn't. Rose looks away and Scorpius knows why she does. I know what the rumour is and it's a lie. Albus looks from an uncomfortable Rose to a desperate Scorpius. Albus. What, what is the rumour? Scorpius. The rumour is that my parents couldn't have children. That my grandfather, my, that my father and my grandfather were so desperate for a powerful heir to prevent the end of the Malfoy line that they, that they used a time turner to send my mother back. Albus. To send her back where? Rose. The rumour is that he's Voldemort's son, Albus. A horrible, uncomfortable silence. It's probably rubbish. I mean, look, you've got a nose. The tension is slightly broken. Scorpius laughs, pathetically grateful. Scorpius. And it's just like my father's. I've got his nose, his hair, his name. Not that that's such a great thing either. I mean, father-son issues, I have them. But on the whole, I'd rather be a Malfoy than, you know, the son of a Dark Lord. Scorpius and Albus look at each other and something passes between them. Rose. Yes, well, we should probably sit somewhere else. Come on, Albus. Albus is thinking deeply. Albus. No. Off of Rose's look. I I'm okay. You go on. Rose. Albus, I won't wait. Albus, and I wouldn't expect you to, but I'm staying here. 
Rose looks at him a second and then leaves the compartment. Fine. Scorpius and Albus are left looking at each other. Unsure. Scorpius. Thank you. Albus. No, no. I didn't stay for you. I stayed for your sweets. Scorpius. She's quite fierce. Albus. Yes, sorry. Scorpius. No, I like it. Do you prefer Albus or Al? Scorpius grins and pops two sweets into his mouth. Albus thinks. Albus. Scorpius. As smoke comes out of his ears. Thank you for staying for my sweets, Albus. Albus laughing. Wow. Thank you guys for watching the first episode of Books and Boba. We're going to be continuing this tomorrow. And so go ahead. If you have any drink suggestions, go ahead and leave them in the comment box below. Or any other feedback. I love feedback. So, yeah. So this is Alyssa Aguilos signing off from Books and Boba. Read, drink, and be merry. Bye.